Hi there, this is Akrish. In previous video, we talked about what are the fundamentals we must know before getting into buffer overflow. So, if you haven't watched that video, go and check it out. Link will be in the description. And in this video, let's get into hands on. Let's do a simple buffer overflow attack and let's learn how to override the return address and redirect the control flow. So, let's get started. So this is the vulnerable code uh, we are going to have. It has a three function. One is main, another one is foo, and another one is package. So here main function calls the foo, and in foo function there is a one local variable called buffer. Its length is forty byte, and then in next line it will print this character in a standard output, and then in next line it will call the getS function. So basically getS function will take the input from the standard input and copy that input to buffer given variable. So the problem here is getS does not check the length of the input before copying it to buffer. So you can google uh, is getS is safe to use or not. So why it is not safe and what is the alternative function we can use instead of getS. Why is that alternative function is safer than getS. You can do it. And and another function is hack rich. So it basically uh, give give us the shell. It will call this function system and it will execute the shell and give, it will give us the shell. So the thing is, it is not called this hack rich function is not called anywhere in the foo function also it's not called and main function in main function also it is not called right. In this exercise, our goal is to call this function. I will upload this source file and also two executable file one is 32 bit executable file and another one is 64 bit executable file and also solution to this exercise to github and i will provide the link in a description so that you can download these two executable file and try it you can try it yourself let's start with a 32 bit executable file i will just run that file well, Mm, I will give the simple input. Uh, this is package. Hmm. It executed normally without giving any error. So this is the expected behavior of this program, right? If I run this same file again, same file one thirty two, and I will give the input which has more, which has a length more than forty byte. Hmm, we got some error, which is segmentation fault error. Why did we get this error? So let's understand why did we get this error. So in previous video, we talked about a uh, stack layout, right? So same thing, this is stack frame for main function and this is stack frame for a uh, foo function. So whenever main function calls the foo function, first thing is parameter will be pushed to the stack. But in our case, foo function does not have any parameter. So return address will be pushed then ebp will be pushed so don't worry about these address these are the dummy address uh, I, I have used for just for example that's it and compiler will allocate the memory for local variable in foo function there is a one variable which is buffer it will allocate the memory for buffer so now we will give the input and which is more than 40 byte now compiler will copy that input data to buffer without checking the length of the input because programmer use the getS function, right? So that's why getS function does not check the length of the input. It directly copy the input to buffer. So now what happens? So we discussed in a previous video that uh, in 32 bit machine, in each block refers four byte. So compiler will now copy the input data to buffer a. So because it's four byte, uh, each character uh, each each character is one one byte. So it holds the 4 a right 4 byte and compiler will keep on copying the data and because it's more than 40 byte it will override the ebp and it will override the return address and so on so now after that after copying the input data to buffer this foo function terminates so in ideal case what should happen uh, now compiler will go to this return address address stored in a return address 
and go to that address and execute the instruction stored in that address right but now what happened is we overwrote that address right with some data now compiler will try to patch the instruction stored in this address because this is not an address at all right this is just the data a a a is the data so now that's why we will get the segmentation point let's understand this little bit more using gdb gdb is a debugger tool which used to debug the c and c++ code okay i will load the executor file using gd in gdb I will run that executable file and I will give the input which is more than 40 bytes. Hmm. We got a segmentation part, but if you look at this line, we got something called 0x41414141. 41, 41, 41. What is this? So let's understand what is this. I will open the python interpreter so i will convert that 0x41 to character hmm it's a so a is written in hexadecimal as 0x41 so that's what we got so if i go to the stack frame again See this A, this A is not written in character. In stack, it is written in hexadecimal. Something like this. 0x41 means one A. 41 means another A. 41 means another A. 41 means another A. Total 4A. And so on. So it will copy the this input. So on. And override this return address. So that's why we got the error like this in a GDP. 0x41 41 41 41. It could not find out this address. That's why we got the segmentation form. So we understood now why did we get the segmentation fault error, right? So let's understand how can we hack this vulnerable code so our goal was to call this hack with function right so if we call this hack with function it will give you the it will execute this line and it will give us the shell so how can we call this function utilizing this uh, overflow vulnerability so if you look at here we overwrote this return address by aaa that is 0x41 41 41 41 right so what if we override this return address by hack with function address then it the compiler will go to that address and execute the instruction stored in that address right so it's basically calling the hackage function so so now our task is to find out what is the address of hackage function so there is another task we need to find out what is the length of the dummy character we need to write in the input so that we can reach to return address so we can find out these two using GDP. so i will load the executable file in GDB and first thing I will do is I will set the disassembly flavor to Intel. So I will disassemble the main function. So here if you look at the 16th line it is calling the foo function right. So let's disassemble the foo function. So this is the assembly code for foo function. So if you look at the 43rd line, it is calling the get at function. So, so we discussed this earlier, right? Uh, whenever there is a function call, compiler will first push the parameter to stack. So if you look at the previous line, it is pushing something, push EAX, right? And what is EAX? EAX is nothing but it's a register. So if you look at the previous line second second previous line lea is called l what lea does is it will load the memory from the source to destination so basically what should be put to the stack if you look at the source code buffer should be pushed to the stack right 
So that means this address, this address is nothing but buffer entry. So EBP minus zero x thirty is accessing the buffer address. So this thing also we discussed, right? Compiler will access the local variable using EBP. So that's what it it is doing. EBP minus zero x thirty means it is accessing the buffer address. Okay. If you convert the zero x thirty to decimal, it is forty eight. Hmm, but it is not forty, right? But buffer should be forty. Buffer length is forty, right? But it is forty eight. So one thing is compiler will not allocate the exact memory. So it 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 will allocate more than that. It might be ex exact forty byte or it's it it might be ex more than forty byte. So it depends on the compiler. Okay. So now we found that this is total forty eight byte. So if we add another four byte, override the EBP. So next thing we can override the return address, right? So if we give fifty two byte padding or fifty two byte dummy character. Then we can reach to this return address and override the return address with what we want. So first thing is done. We found out what is the length of the padding we need to give in order to reach the return address. So second task was find out the hash reach function address, right? So we can find that using BGP. Let's clear this. Oh, uh, output. So if we say print hack rich, it will give us the address of the hack rich function. So this is the hack rich function address. So we completed two tasks. We found out what is the length of the character we need to write in order to reach the return address, and also we found out that what is the address of hack rich function. So now we will write the payload using Python. Here I am going to use a pound tool. Uh, you can complete this exercise without using pound tool also. But pound tool comes up with a plenty of inbuilt function uh, which we can utilize, uh, which makes the process simpler. We can install the pound tool using pip. Uh, you just say pip install pound tools and hit enter. That's it. So let load the pound tool. Um, Pound import star. So now I will create the process. So you just say process and give the name of the executor file. Right? So when we run this one thirty two executable file, it will return some string, right? In order to receive that string, uh, we say p dot receive. So it will receive all the string. Written by this executable file. I will just print this out. So let's see what is going on. So I will just run this exploit. Hmm. You can see that the local process is started, uh, which is one hundred thirty-two, and it assigned with some process ID, and it received some string. Uh, give me your input, and we printed that standard output, right? So let give some input. So what input we wanted to give? So this is the input we wanted to give, right? Okay. So let the padding. Padding is a uh, how many a we want to how many dummy character we want to give in the input, which is fifty two. So I will make this as byte. And then, what is the return address? We want to overwrite, which is this, right? Copy here. If you write the return address like this, uh, it won't work because uh, in stack things are written in Little India. So there is something called Big Indian and Little Indian. Uh, So here we are using pound tool, so we can use the built-in function. There is a there is a function called p32 for 32 bit. 
and P64 for P64 bit. So if I say P32, so this function will write this address in little Indian. So now we want to send this payload process, right? You just say P dot send line, and we want to send this payload. And we want to print what the, what the output written by this process after sending this uh, payload. So you can say print p dot receive, or you can use p dot clean also, which does the same thing. So let run this Python code. Let's see what we get. Python exploit dot. Hmm. So we got something like this. That means we called the what hackage function, right? So this is written in hackage function. That means we called the hackage function, but we didn't got the shell. That's because this process is stopped. For that, we need to use another function uh, called p dot interactive. Let's use that too. Let's say p dot interactive. And let run the same thing. Okay. Hmm. We got a shell, right? Yeah. We can execute the command anything we want. Like, let's say, who am I? And say, ID. So, this is how uh, buffer overflow leads to major issue. So now we completed the exercise for 32 bit uh, executable file. Let's do it for 64 bit executable file. The, the process is same. Um, here we will say 64 bit file. And we need to find out how much padding we need to add. So we can find that out using GDB, right? Hmm. From here, clear that. 64 bit. Set the disassembly flavor to enter. Disassemble the poo function. Hmm. This is also 30. 0 x 30 only. But in 64 bit uh, executable file, the EBP is 8 byte. So we need to add 8 byte to it. So that is 56 byte. So total padding is 56 byte. And we need to find out what is the hack reach function address, right? That here yeah, we can say print hack reach. So this is the address for hack reach function. Let's copy this and paste it here. But this is not 32 bit, this is 64 bit, right? Huh. So rest of the thing is same. So let run this code. Let's exit from this. Let's clear this. Let run the Python code. And we got the shell. So this is it. So until then, stay tuned, like the video and subscribe the channel.